Are you overfeeding or underfeeding your plants and why? Why pH matters this time, Scotty. pH does matter. Louis say it doesn't quite a bit as well on the show, but welcome to Dude Grow Show. How's it hey, going? Hey, what's going on, dude? What's going on, Grambo? Yo, yo. All right. Come on, you want to get right into yeah. the grow talk? Yeah, right into grow talk. Why not? We had a hot question off dudegrows.com. Get your grower questions up. Use that search bar. This is help DGC. My plants look awful <laughs> by rolling smoke. It says, first off, and these plants, man, maybe grandma can scroll some sadness of the pictures while we're narrating, but let me, let me tell you what rolling smoke has to say here. First off, these plants have been mistreated due to no training and just some topping. It's not a full mistreatment there. It says, I've been ill and spent a couple stints in the hospital, but I'm okay now. And that stinks, man. When you get pulled away from your garden, like, and you, some people don't even have the option to have anybody to help caretake, you know? Right. And that's just, it's sensitive time if you're entering flowering or whatever you got called it. Let me get, let me get on with it here. It says, the plants got in veg, uh, non-pH adjusted water for about eight days, and the pH was about 9.4. Wow, which is ouch. Wonder where you're getting 9.4 water from. We say, go ahead. No, I was just going to say that uh, that is when pH matters. When it's what, below five, when it's above above eight, I would think, is when you do either have to condition your soil or your or your water going in. And don't forget, you can do either. This is, I mean, I know, and it can fluctuate depending on where your water is sourced. My well stays solid. I've been here four years now. When I had a pH pen, uh, it was always coming off right around seven. And I think that's the goal of most municipalities. You know, neutral, keep stuff around seven. It right. doesn't always work like that. I've had some, I think even at your place, Scotty, where the water supply can change from reservoir to reservoir and your pH can fluctuate some. But yep. typically, it's never way up in the nines or way down lows acidic that's not the goal of most you know water supplies but let's go on with what happened to the plants here i said i came home the plants were dry were dry and had a bunch of burnt up leaves i flushed them with water as ph 65 all right then slowly got them looking good till about week three of flower then i noticed a little purple around the edges and some light yellowing on scattered leaves then i had surgery I was gone for several days again but talked to a friend through the feeding that had some experience okay and these are the pictures I came home to. So the nutrition, before we look at these pictures, he's growing in happy frog, which that will feed your plants for a while, not that long. After a month in veg or whatever's in there, you're going to run out of nutrition, as well as some oyster shell. But then the complete line of blue hey, plant farmers like, pride organic. I got to tell you, yeah. oyster shells will raise your pH, though. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, that's kind of a problem if you're watering night. Counterintuitive. Watering. Yeah. I agree. And then looking at scroll these pictures, the plants, guys, if you're listening, very yellow leaves, not much nutrition in them um, at all. And seeing the flower on the top of the picture, like this is such a horrible time to try and recover from this. When you're three weeks, four weeks into flowering, you can. I mean, go ahead. you can't recover from this. Your plants are dying. Your plants, when they're flowering, they're dying, and they're slowly just trying. They're building this material to attract resin so they can live another generation. I mean, you might get tiny little popcorn buds out of this, uh, but you just, the, the idea of you've only got, what, 90, 100 days to grow these plants, you can't let them slow down, especially at that point. In veg, a bit more forgiving. Once they're like that, if I had the opportunity to just get new clones, it'd be in a month from now, be a month in the veg, or have the harvest you're gonna have, I'd rather be a month in the veg and 60 days away from flowering. I agree. And yeah, Maestro says right here, first comment says uh, nutrient lockout occurred when your pH buffer went alkaline. Terrible news in flowers. Recovery can take weeks. Yeah. And I, can't, I don't know what your friend did while they were there. He's running this. I just looked up the blue planet line. It's a grow micro bloom. He should have his meat and potatoes. If the nutrients are available, you got your, you know, and basic NBK, your plant should look healthy. They should look happy. If you mix them right, I mean, it's grow, micro, and bloom. Have you ever mixed it wrong? I definitely have. Especially as far as the order of it or the patients in between, actually. Yeah, or did I put, did I already put this in there? I've definitely smoked a joint. <laughs> no, did I put the micro in, the micro in there already? Uh, but just in general, if you've got someone showing up to do you a favor, and then they've got to do a three-part solution. I won't turn this into a DeGrodots commercial, I promise. I might at the end, though. No, I'm just That's kidding. Fine. But 
But uh, <laughs> it's a lot to ask to ask somebody to come in there. And don't forget overwatering. Overwatering will just keep your plants from taking anything up. And that's an easy thing to do, whether it's overwatering, underwatering. Very easy to do that, too, if you're if you're not there. Don't say real buckets either. Uh, I, I, I thought this would be a good opportunity, man. I, honestly, as my advice for rolling smoke, I won't assume gender there, is I would start over again. I would see if you can get some clones from somebody or hopefully maybe you got some clones ready to go. And um, I would start over and... Have you bought insurance for your grow? Come on, guys. If not, go to pulsegrow.com. Get the pulse monitors. They are insurance for the grow. Notify you when humidity is off, temperature, lights are on and off at the wrong time, equipment failures, power outages, all emailed and or texted to you immediately so you can get the data, keep growing the dank and have everything on point. And while you're at pulsegrow.com, make sure you click on their learn tab, guys. They have all types of great guides on VPD, CO2, a VPD calculator. And if you don't know what VPD is, Head on over there, pulsegrow.com, coupon code DUDE across the board will hook you up on Pulse Grow products. Protect your grow, get notified when something goes wrong. Uh, yeah, I, I would definitely address the, the water issue. What do you think, dude? What's Is it just there? easier to just pH the water? I was just gonna ask you, I see your note here when you first started growing bamboo, granted that's on a large scale outside yes. acreage. You tried to pH the solution, probably comes in your brain from being a hydroponic cannabis grower. You're like, we always pH the solution. But yeah. why wouldn't that work? It, First, would, saying, it, it costs you a fortune. I mean, it costs you a fortune. If you were doing that hydroponically, it just doesn't scale, though. So what you do is you just put things in the soil uh, that, that will affect the pH. You know, I mean, like uh, sulfur. By the way, cannabis uses a ton of sulfur. When you get pH down, that's sulfuric acid. That's battery acid. Sulfur will lower your pH. So something like that that the plant can use. Um, yeah, there's a lot of things. Uh, what Canadian peat, I found out. I'm looking at my little list here. If you want to adapt your uh, substrate next time, instead of just regular peat, Canadian peat is a bit more acidic. Um, and then potash. Potash is just wood ash, and that's acidic too. It's I see lime being the most common one as far as some people, but now it depends on your mix. Like if you're buying HP Pro Mix, popular brand out there for us growers, it's they they buffer that shit like it, it's at the proper pH. I guess it depends on your inputs. If you're an organic grower, some people do add a little bit of lime. I never add lime to my can of cocoa. Uh, don't need to. Um, and it depends. It depends what your pH is going in. You know, if your pH is really low going in, you're like, hey, you know what, man? I don't have to pH my water if I put, I mean, come on, you, you, you've used oyster shells before, or we've all seen the box of down to earth crustacean meal and uh, yeah, all that's lime. There's been some or, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. All that's calcium out. carbonate. All that's calcium carbonate. Sorry. You remember, uh, oh man, I forgot their name now. There was RX Green Solutions, then RX Green Technologies, and then something else. I use their nutrients. They're, you know, uh, just whatever, chelated. They're one organic nutrients, liquid nutrients. You'd water those babies in. Not intentionally. It'd, put a, it'd bring your solution down into the forest when you'd feed with those. I, yeah. I, what the heck, you know? And it, it worked completely fine. There's papers on it. We covered it on the show way back in the day. The other thing, though, with that, Watering in, I always remember liquid organics. They weren't fully organic. General Hydro came out with a brand called General Organics. And when you water that funk in, you get a really low pH, I think, from the acidic preservatives, maybe in the organic bottles, because otherwise in the reps, like, don't worry about it. You just water that in. You don't need to bring that back up. And those that I would always struggle with that as a grower. Same as watering in recharge. I tell growers, hey, should I adjust the pH in my recharge solution? No, do not do that. If it's within range, if it's within range of whether you're using general organics, I, they ha must have a microbe. Yeah, they used to have that something A and B. They had two microbes that went along yeah, with it. Yeah. And that would process, you know, and that would, uh, yeah, that would, um, what am I trying to say? Not equalize, yeah, balance the pH out. Those microbes want to live at a certain pH and they can excrete uh, enzymes or whatever to change the pH. Can I say what's up to Grandpa? Why are you so quiet? Is Grandpa there? Is I'm he on the board? I'm just listening about pH, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I love potential hydrogen. 
Hey, by the way, potential uh, hydrogen, since you said that, yeah, I've never taken chemistry. I, I won't front at all. But when I was looking at a lot of these things that lower the pH, they had hydrogen in the chemical formulation of them. Mm. So I know the power of hydrogen. I noticed that it seems like the ones with hydrogen attached to them seem to lower the pH. Yeah, it's very weird. Well, I was doing research, dude, okay? And speaking of that, you know, I've been putting silicon dioxide in my soil. Remember like, I told you? Yeah, what, remember like, I told you? Like, where are you getting it? Is it like granules? Is it your... No, I, by the way, with, with all this stuff, the smaller the particle size, the more plant available it is. So you can get chunks of silicon dioxide that look like kosher salt, and you, you can get this super soluble, but yeah, just not even soluble, just this super fine powder. And uh, that's what I'm putting in my soil. But that will raise the pH up. Uh, and it just kind of reminded me, I don't know how effective that will be. I'm just playing around with that. But uh, diatomaceous earth is mostly silicon. What is it? It's, uh, let's see, I wrote it down here. Diatomaceous earth between 80 and 90% silica. And it's like a 9.2 pH, but it tends to neutralize the uh, pH. So it tends to... Uh, yeah, so if you had real high pH water going in or even real low pH, it seems, seems to work on, a, I don't know, it seems to neutralize. I suck right? as a grower, man. I know some people that were on bad wells back in the day and they had to buy mm. some special nutrients, get water, you know, go through a few fails before actually, man, I got to get my water tested. I have to understand what's going on here um, because, yeah, it's your bread and butter of the whole, the whole system, if you will. What's, what's what the most you, you've ever uh, seen? What's the most you've ever seen out of well water, PPM? Uh, myself, not much. Other growers that I've helped out at, like when I was working hydro, it would be like close. To, I think like a four to five hundred. Yeah, I got six hundred one time or six and change one time. What was it? I'm, is it is it something that's beneficial at all? No, it's mostly sodium, which is a, a big problem. Could be calcium, but it's mostly sodium. Uh, at least in Florida, there's a lot of sodium in there, so it's a big deal. Well, I'm going to take it back to Rolling Smoke here. If you guys are learning, having some entertainment, comment, like, subscribe, hit the bell, help us grow the show. Thank you for that. It means a lot. And Rolling Smoke, I was just sitting here thinking about your situation. You know, your plants were looking good until you had a couple stints in the hospital. Understand. Uh, then they went bad. Then you got them looking good again. And then when you had to go in for surgery, you came back, they were looking bad. So I don't want to pin this on you. You have a complete nutrient line that should be giving you a complete, proper amount of food, watered in at the right pH you should have no issues. I'm pointing fingers with what I know and what happened when you weren't there, either incorrectly using nutrients or whatever. But let's look at, you pull up a couple quick leaf guides on, on deficiencies that are kind of interesting. Yeah, I just thought it'd be cool to just take a look. I, I really, what happens with pH is you just get general uh, nutrient lockout where the plant just can't suck up nutrients. So it could be kind of any one of these nutrient problems. Or actually, this one's different. This one's different. Just take a look, man. Just roll through these real quick, Grambo, if you would. Because there's all sorts of, where is this from? Pure, uh, where is I like it from? the other one you had, the other link you had, with the uh, actual, like, a, a cool, no, go to the one below it, Grambo. The next one, a comprehensive guide. The other link, Grambo. Oh, let's check it out. Let's see. I like yeah. that one. Wait, this is out of 40, better. <laughs> too fast for buds.com. So when I'm out looking at my plants outside right now and you start to see some deficiencies it's almost impossible for my brain to remember all these because some of them kind of look alike when you're not having this chart in front of you and then you see they actually do really look like they're getting green from the inner node or from the outside what's up why bother why bother if this is happening to you and you have a complete fertilizer then you know that something that is ph or something else is up and it's, it's a not, really it's good your tip food. so for me what I'm doing now, because I'm at this point where I literally, I'm getting them down, but I have like probably still, you know, I got some rainbow nutrients. I got some lotus nutrients. I got like three or four different types of nutrients, sometimes a bottle just from one. And I got to get through it. Like this is a waste to not use this product. So for me, I am using a complete line, but multiple. And I'm not giving that as, as a grow advice to people, but maybe you don't have a complete line and you had a living soil and you want to see what's running out first and you're going to supplement that. Just go back you know to I mean? that if you would. The only one that I think is really necessary there is the calcium and the magnesium because everything else there should be plenty of uh, in your base fertilizer. And trust me, I'm designing grow dots. Uh, it is a uh, cannabis is a magnesium hog, not so much the calcium, but the magnesium hog. So you can see uh, 
frequently you'll have magnesium deficiencies and don't buy cow mag just get yourself some epsom salts in my opinion no it's a good grow tip as well for sure hey, uh, do me a favor like grambo it. would you go back to that last one just because it wasn't even nutrients but I, th I thought they did a good job scroll right up to the top who did this what is that pure instino instino pure instino man good instinct but it's just instino. all these i don't know it's just over and under watering, just look, the underwatering is them drooping because they've lost, you know, their turgidity, they've lost any ability to hold themselves up. Overwatering, they just can't breathe, so it's kind of the same thing. Uh, I don't know, nutrient burn's an easy one, man. Burnt tips that curl up, you know, brown tips. And uh, as long as I'm on a roll, I just burnt. Grandpa, did you see? I'll never let you take pictures of it. I burnt the <sighs> hell out of my plants. They, I need to throw them out. I burn them so bad with the lights. Mm. No, oh, you're not showing them. Are you nuts? No, I'm just. Wait, uh, keep on going if you what would. Was then. Wait, wait, when, when, what? what? Oh, In your main I, grow? Yeah, and just I have those three mother plants. That's why I so aggressively took clones, or thankfully I took clones right before. But I dialed, that's an HLG 650, and I dialed it up and left for a couple of days. And yeah, they turned to garbage, man. They turned to garbage. How, how far off the yeah. canopy was it? Do you oh, recall? Grambo showing my fail. <laughs> Thanks, Grambo. Ah, oh, that's, what, that's what too much light looks like. That right there, I don't know if you can pause it there. Yes, right there. You see how they're just folding up? They're like, what the hell did you do to me? And uh, I think I turned, I, maybe I turned it up to 60%. I'm saying 40, but I might be lying to myself, man. It just makes you feel better inside, I understand. <laughs> I think I am lying to myself. That's a good example of light stress. Learn from my pain, friends. What else, man? What else, Grambo? Go back to that. Just do me a favor. Go. Yes, sir. It was just cool, you just man. Were saying you had uh, yes. so instead of shouting out real growers, let's see what your dots and recharge are doing. You said your plants are looking good in your other your veg tent. This just yeah, this is the tent that I'm growing in the AC Infinity two by four. Uh, just their whole setup was at a hundred watt light, and I, I feel bad. I never do anything to these. I don't even visit them. The last thing I did was stake them up about <laughs> ten days ago. I guess we're hanging out, right? You're just in your room over there. <laughs> looking right? good. You know what, Looking though? We, they, we do hang out with them. Hang on a second. They can't see us anyhow. <laughs> right? So we're full on hanging out with these things all the time. Yeah, sure. Damn. I, I should love put it. them on the insurance. It. Now it makes sense because they look great. <sighs> don't do anything. Give them a boost, a boost of CO2 in there. So those are in real buckets. No. And those are moms there is on grow dot. Just so you know, there is no CO2 in there. And I'll take this as my, as my uh, real growers plug. These have grow dots in them, 75 grams of grow dots in the real buckets. And they just, we just hang out together. That's the only other thing I do. I will say I shaped them and I did stake them. But other than that, nothing. No CO2. Okay. Uh, shout out to AC Infinity, a friend of the show, a good supporter. That is their stock system right there with their stock light for their two by four. Well, that's under a G for that thing, right? under 600 bucks use ac infinity yeah rocking over there coupon code dude will hook you up as well uh yeah. i think it's like 500 something for two by four are you taking those plants to you in, uh, are, are those for moms right you're not flipping those to bloom yeah those are in bloom those are 10 days those are 10 days okay good i was about to say you gotta flip those soon man yeah right, cool. i was thinking about it for five or six hundred bucks man ready ready utah Make it two. <laughs> well, you know it, right? You know it. <laughs> A little point break action there. That's dude's favorite movie ever, no? Point break. Point break yeah. is uh something I'm due to rewatch. It's got too many classic lines in it, man. So good. Ah, um, it does. Yeah. <laughs> it does, man. Cool. That what else you got, dude? That Lebowski. Uh that was all off of guys. Get your grower questions up, dudegrows.com. And uh, the community over there will be helping out. We like to get them on the show. Use the search bar on the site. Uh, be patient. Banner is halfway head exploding. And Maestro, they're working on rebuilding the whole site as well. So stay tuned for that. I was talking to Banner about that today. I was kind of making my head hurt a little bit. What do you got? <laughs> Dude, I was just, I pulled some clones out to show. These aren't completely ready nice. yet. Oh, hey, Grambo told me I got a clone cam here. Clone man. cam. <laughs> I mean, they're. 
decent. They'll be fine. And I'm just gonna show, just looking for some roots down here. So let me see if I can. Yeah, is it the root cam now, Grambo? Root cam, baby. Yeah, but that's what you want. So I'm hardening these off now. Uh, means I'm taking the uh, tr uh, the dome off. I did it for, I don't know, a half hour yesterday. Now I'm doing it for a few hours and I'm getting them to breathe or use their roots as opposed to only using their leaves and be able to get nutrient foliar foliarly. Now they're getting nutrient and, uh, and water through their leaves. Ooh. Ooh, the cam. Good. Anyway, so I'm pretty psyched. Yeah. I'm just real quick. I'm gonna end up throwing these things out, man. I'm gonna have to throw those light burns ones ones out. I'm gonna take my own advice and uh, just replace them with this. So thankfully, I had some clones. Get two AC Infinity tents, man. A B V. All right. Always be vegging. How about that? <laughs> yeah, you're gonna run out of weed again. I think, man. You worried? <laughs> Aren't you already you almost know. out? You know, I got friends like taking tops, man. All right, I'll be, I'll be all right, man. Taking tops takes care of his voice, man. All right. Oh yeah. Daily. Yes, taking tops. DGC producer, man. I'll shout out that. What's up, taking tops and some other DGC producers here, like Fast and Grass Farm, and uh, what smell? It's like me reacting to the, the mother-in-law, man. What, what smell? Come on. Can you it's really talking. smell that? Me talking to the county code enforcement guy out front of my house, man, right on the property <laughs> line, man. What smell? <laughs> Don't forget Carl Pickens, sir. Carl Pickens. And the Sunny and Bigtopia. All right. Solid. Rasufa, there you go. All sorts of solid DGC yes. here. Right on. It's right on. Rasufa. Also, Red Eye Guy. Last but not least, guys, if you want to help us out, dogrows.com. It's not even about helping us out, man. Access to the DDC Discord. Expert growers over there. We're doing a show every Friday, and it's not just about the Friday happy hour. People are hanging out there, growers, helping growers in all types of disciplines, as well as super hot deals from real growers, man. Membership pays for itself if you're running the Grow Dots or Recharge. Hook it up. Uh, as well after shows man and pre-releases we're doing too much to list dudegrows.com forward slash support and dollars a month man wouldn't be here without you ddc producers so thank you very much for doing what you do yes and i'm just looking at rolling smoke here get in touch with me if you do want to if you are going to redo your grow get in touch with me i'll help you a little bit a real grower's a fiat hey <laughs> You just make a new words, regrow, regrow, regrow. You can just put a fi on anything, man. All right, I'll realify it. Man. I'll realify it. Realification. Nah, there's super simple ways to grow. I'd love to get you going with one. So even if you do go in the hospital, you come out with good looking plants. Wow. Scotty Real. Yes. My man. We have uh, some grow comments here, some fun comments, but let's yeah. get into the comments. This first one's Grow from Footy Grows New York, right on time with the clones. One thing about clones that many people overlook is hardening off. I give them a full day in the dome, then remove the dome for 30 minutes a day, one to two times, then three to four times a day, and then up it to one hour. Then increase the hour to hardening off to every one to two days. I usually see roots in seven days, and I just use my windowsill. Nice. I like what? Wait, wait, wait. After what? That's after they root, right? Like after... Can't harden them off until you see roots. I would, I mean, well, regard, yeah, I wouldn't, that's way too long. I'm assuming after roots for sure. If you're taking it off, if you don't want your dome off for 30 minutes with, you know, bare, no roots. Unless so, you're telling me something new. I mean, please comment. I mean, could it be some kind of crazy stress or something? Because it takes me, uh, I'll have to look, but I think these are on the seventh, if I'm not mistaken, I took these. So these are 10, 11 days old and they got nice roots. I, was, I just started hardening them off a couple of days ago, though. So I, I just started taking the lid off. I opened the, the vents on the lid. Then the next day I put the lid ajar a little bit and I go and I put it back and um, and then you take the lid off for 30 minutes at a time. And hopefully you got CO2 because that helps a bunch. And uh, yeah, this is, these still need another day or so, I'd say. And they're still stressing out a little bit like being outside. He's saying that because I read that a little wrong. It says, yeah, I removed the dome for 30 minutes, day one and two. And then on day three and four for one hour. And then increase the hour of hardening off every one to two days and see roots in seven days. Interesting. I think my clones would not like that until they had roots. Yeah, please elaborate. Um, so I didn't know you guys uh, 
went to ministry because we got a good comment here from Desert Dude 317. It says, uh, John Fetterman was at the concert too? That's rad. Ah, uh, no, Rambo's got John friends Fetterman. in high places. John um, Fetterman is a congressman from uh, Pennsylvania. Is that right? I don't know. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> it's, it's uncanny. It's uncanny. I've been at concerts with, uh, with Kenny before. That's nice guy, Kenny. Oh my God. And uh, people, somebody walked up to him one time and goes, Are you him? And he goes, No, no, no. it was awesome. Hey, that, that was so weird. That was Filter, Ministry, Alice Cooper, and Rob Zombie. It was four bands. It was really fun. Wait. Everyone did any of them it, seem... it was Wait, did they Did they have performers or the crowd make you feel old? The crowd. Was... Both. Both. But, <laughs> yeah, Rob Zombie just, uh, he's one of them guys who just lets the beard go. So he's just got this huge kind of grayish beard. He looks like ZZ Top a little bit with dreadlocks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, you know what? Uh, Grandpa Al from Ministry, he was all right. He didn't seem old. No. He, I think he aged the best out of any of them. He's 64. I Googled it. The thing that blew my mind is I was thinking about Alice Cooper has been touring for about 15 years before I was born. Is he close? Yeah, right. Is he close to 80? And he's still, he did a damn good insane. show. It was great. Oh, he had an awesome female guitarist. Oh, yeah, yeah. My uh, my lady friend knows her. We were talking about it. She, uh what runs a venue in denver yada yada couldn't be a cooler person just got married so shout out to nita i believe her name is. wow yeah. and another uh, steven geyer 657 says ministry is one of the most brutal pits back in <laughs> okay. the mid 90s during metal fest days were you guys pit guys ever oh yeah and now you know what I actually sprung for some good seats and we were about five rows back from the pit mm -hmm. and there was no pit, man. It was, it was a bunch of like 50 year olds and older mm -hmm. that were just hanging out, standing, watching the, watching the show, yeah. but there was no kind pit. of just shoulder bumping a little bit, like barely. I don't know, man. Were they? No, a little bit. Uh, barely. It, yeah, it wasn't, it barely. wasn't all that much. Hey, Grambo was just scrolling through his Instagram and it showed a dude in a washing machine. <laughs> <laughs> what was going on there, uh, man? Which one? Oh, it's all right. It's all right. I, I got to hang out with Yair yeah. from Gavita the other night. Did you? Where'd you see him? Yeah. He's a cool guy. I uh, was hanging out with over at the, the New Mill place, and he showed up, and uh, yeah, he, he was like, let's go to dinner. He gave me great advice. He, he made me laugh very hard. He goes, Josh, can I give you some advice? Is it with airplanes, boats, and with women? It is always best to rent. Oh, and I go, Yair, man. that's the greatest thing anyone's ever said to me. I got to be honest, you just worked so hard not to drop an F-bomb. Oh. And then it did. <laughs> he didn't say that. Darn. He didn't say that. It all of them go with an F, man. All right. And I was smoking on some taking tops. Nah. Wow. Right. Look at you. Yeah. Mr. Coolio over there. Yeah. Wow. Hey, by the way, the you know. I got to say, man, I'm, I, lo I love to see Grambo legit DGC with all these, you know, showing the goods off. <laughs> it's been a year, man. Oh, that's crazy. So it's yeah. been a year last week. Last Wednesday actually was one year. September 13th was my one year show with you guys. And we've just been so busy, like doing the show. We didn't wow. even really notice. But I saw an Instagram post that's so like, oh, oh my God. I, I posted all like newbie Josh, like, hey, we just wrapped the first show. I actually still have the clip of dude welcoming me to like the show. He's like, Grambo, if you're nervous, just mark an edit. Don't worry about it. If you fuck up everything, it's Oh, it's so cool. And so, yeah, dude. So I appreciate you guys. Thanks so much for bringing me in. I've got to meet so many freaking cool people and so many like awesome situations and just, all yeah. Right. You're legit, Grambo. Uh, like I guys. said, you've been DGC since I thought you said episode nine, but I yeah, can't remember. Yeah, so somewhere like that. It's it's been a minute. I have a. I'm about to find the. What's with the hat, man? Did I really get on video with that hat? With this hat? Was I like? Yeah. Oh, I, that was oh, the, oh! There you go. The chaos. Who yeah. is that person? That's a that so weird. Man. AI, I was playing with some AI humans. That's a how long, man? Into, I mean, you already can't believe what you see, right? That guy could be substituting for old Scotty. Ah, oh, it's creepy. Wow. Yeah. All right. All right. But yeah, no, thank you guys. I I actually just was scrolling there to find I have a picture of me with my daughter when she was like. 
two months old and I'm like half passed out and I got my dude grows DGC cup t-shirt on. Or wow. Anything. So of course I didn't put it in the thing because life is going crazy, but no, seriously, thank you guys. One year is flew by. I can't believe how much uh, we've changed, grown. I hope you guys like the show. Follow me on Instagram at Josh Grambo. I like to post these guys behind the scenes stuff. So thank you guys. Thank you, Brett. Thank you, Scott. Wow. One year. Grambo. Awesome guys. Oh, thank you, please, my friend. Dude. Thank you. Dude. I was talking to a, uh, our friend Brett over here. Hey, if you don't know the story, oh. by the way, when uh, Guru left, Grambo just, I don't know if you called or texted and you just said, hey, guys, I can do that. Well, it's I actually one of my that. favorite stories of how I got here. Like, I got off the road for a month. I just came to hang out with you because I hadn't hung out with any Denver friends. You're like, come up. And, and you specifically said, because Guru was still here that day. You're like, we don't have any business to discuss, but, you know, come up, hang out, do whatever. And I was like, all right, we have no business to discuss. And I show up. He's like, you want a job? I don't know if you noticed what I literally I was like, I got off the road I yesterday. Had business to discuss. Damn. So, yeah, it's changed my life. And. I'm loving it. And I love you, yeah. DTC. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, everyone. Shout out to like s- s- certain guys like Do You Write Genetics, J Pen 87. You know, guys, I'm, I'm going to leave out so many people, but definitely J Pen. He, he, me and him, thank you, J Pen. You're the man. He you got J-Pen me. J Pen pals. Yeah. Oh. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. I had a little depression over winter, and J Pen was like, bro, I've lived your life, and it's better on the other side. And, it was. So thanks, Jake. Oh, the DGC is good for us all. It, is. it really is. It's it really some is. kind people. We've developed a really kind community, which is difficult to do mm-hmm. on the internet. Yeah. And I will say, Jay Meister had a lot to do with it. He's like our bouncer. Shout out. A floor man. Meister. Floor man. Sorry. Meister. But he don't, he don't tolerate any misbehavior. You go to the club, you're going to behave yourself. Man. Damn right. <laughs> oh, Love I'm it. thinking of nice guy it. Kenny's job for 25 years. That was nice guy Kenny's job, right? And now he's the he was a floor man at a club. Yes, Fetterman. And when I say club, I, I mean not. strip club. Fetterman. Can't believe, can't believe he made it that long. That just wear on you, I think. Quickly. Dude, and dude, I, I, I don't think he'll be bummed out if I tell this, but he turned 50, and when he turned 50, they just brought him in and go, "Hey, sorry, you're fired, man." You know, can't work here after 50. That was it. It just, hit the, it just hit, the, hit the age limit, man. You know, insane. there's nothing wrong with you, your work performance, or anything yeah. you've done. You're great, well, but you're fired. You're creeping out the girls. Hey, I'm sorry. Hang on. It was insanity every night there, all right? There was a thousand reasons to get fired and arrested every night, all right? But, you know, still, they never did. That's the point. You should write Every a day. book. That'd be a good basis for a book. Let me take it back to the comments here because this one is an update. Uh, I think it was on the Saturday show. If you guys were hanging out, we showed a McGruff, the crime dog, fear mongering, telling the kids you're going to get kidnapped. Don't go with him, <laughs> Sally. Good job. That's the, the last time you saw Sally. Voice. <laughs> so at Peace of Mind Farming says the feds fear mongering McGruff is simple psych ops. It broke so many homes and lives. So I don't know. <laughs> no, uh, you have McGruff throwing the. First pitch out on a baseball game. Well, you want to read the headline so, real quick? McGruff the crime dog. <laughs> my, my, shut up. McGruff the crime dog actor jailed for pot grenade launchers. He had pot <laughs> and no, grenade check launchers. Out. Check this out out of the article. So uh, he, the man who used to play McGruff was uh, lived in Galveston, Texas. A drug sniffing dog detected pot when he was pulled over speeding. Police found two diagrams of indoor growing operations and a plethora of seeds. I'm like, what? What is he? This guy wants to be most <laughs> like diagrams, <laughs> like lights here, carbon. Here's filter how I was gonna here. do it. Here's how much money I was gonna make. By the way, take this one too. It's my ledger. It, could, it can happen. I mean, you can be driving to the grow store. We're gonna trade some seeds and oh show it to somebody in your idea to grow. But when police raided his house, they seized a thousand plants. And 9,000 rounds of ammunition and 27 weapons, including a, gr- a grenade launcher. An actual, anyway, I thought I that it was like some sort of seed grenade launcher. They were implying like he's arrested for pot grenade launcher, yeah. like some sort of like t shirt launcher. No, he had a, McGruff is gay. He's taking a bite out of the yeah. black market. I thought it was a dab rig. Damn. 16 years for it, but I wanted to play just a little. I didn't hey, know. Hey, hang on. We got to do a public service announcement, man. Guns and weed don't yeah. get along, man. Yeah. Until it's federally legal. Mm. Yeah. If yeah. they want to yeah. screw you, they can. Man. So not even a little bit of guns and a little bit of weed. They just don't play well with each other. That's true. So 
uh, back in the eighties, McGruff came out with his own like <laughs> set. Man, came out with like Dude. a thirty minute long set, and I believe people suggested to the actor that they hire like a voiceover, and he's like, "No, I'll sing it. I got it." So I just <laughs> think we should play a little bit. I got these timestamps. Let's hear about uh, McGruff giving us an advice on an inhalants. Hit All this, right. Grandpa. Let's check it out. Inhalants. They can break you in two. So never sniff inhalants. Oh my God! Breathe in them. It really no. Don't you know Dude, you win. Really you just win. <laughs> oh my God! Let's hear. Uh, Great, hang on, Grandpa. Just play. best clip ever, right there, right? I want to Probably. make a like, cover of this. Na- like, how funny would it be? Don't do inhalants. It would. That would go. It go over so well with today's audience. Dude, are there any good tracks on here? What do we got? Winners I mean, don't this, use. Dude's got all the Green best tracks. Marijuana. Just listen to the, the one on marijuana here. Play about just 30 seconds of this next one. All right, one. let's check it out. Marijuana. Marijuana, don't try it at all. It's, a cat. it's like beating your head on a wall. This is Toto's total line. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Marijuana's a fast way to fall. <laughs> oh, my God. Right. So it's like <laughs> the message you in know the thought the is... Don't it's the same do thing I was doing like about weed. weed. My, my parodies were just the opposite. Smoke weed, grow it, right? <laughs> you know, I can't be grudging. Come from the same the place. Parody. He's the yin, I'm the yang, you know? Man, those are hilarious. Kind of crazy. There's no anyway, way they're copyrighted. The, the, the reasoning. So we're using those for things in the future, guys. It is like the yin and the yang, right? Because at the end of it, the little black dot in there is the guy getting busted mm. for growing weed, right? Like in the end, he likes weed. Crazy. Yeah, wow, man. Well, the the reasoning in there is interesting. It's like right along the same time frame, you showed a clip of the one guy, they're both eating dinner, and he's like, so, um, you know, drug money uh, funds terrorism. And the guy on the other side of the table goes, yep, that's right. Because it's true. And he's like, that's what he says, because it's true. Because it's true. So McGruff is saying, don't smoke marijuana because it's like beating your head against the wall. (laughs) And you know, kids that have seen people smoke marijuana, they're like, "Uh, it doesn't look like that person's beating the head against the wall. Like, you're lying to me immediately. Like, the messaging was so horrible. And anyway. Yeah, having that, I like, I took a... I took a sociology and then there was a second one you could take, which was social problems. And it was interesting. It was like the first time I went to college and kind of got like this counterculture point of view. The sociology professor was uh, was pretty counterculture. And one of the articles I remember we looked at in our kind of workbook or whatever it was, supplement, was about hyping instant addiction and how it had such a backfire. Because, you know, they were like, you smoke crack once or you do cocaine once and you're addicted. And then, you know, somebody that, I'm sorry, I'm from South Florida, that does cocaine or smokes cocaine periodically and doesn't get addicted. Smoke it? You crack. Cocaine? Crack. I know some of my friends that are like, yeah, they did crack one night. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I had some buddies one time come back to my place after we were downtown St. Louis uh like on the old landing like a, right in the heart of the city we went to some show um heavy metal i don't recall regardless we were back at my I'm like yeah let's party my parents are out of town and these two cats thought they had bought like some crack rock or something my two of these guys two of my friends that were over <laughs> and they're out of my back deck and i'm like what are you guys doing they're like they're trying to be real quiet about it like we think we scored some crack i'm like are you crazy and re- all they had really was pieces of gravel off the ground it's one of those deals, you know, where somebody just rips you completely off. Right. Uh, At least I got ripped uh, off for weed, getting super glue and oregano. Oh, my God. Not super glue. It was like gummy <laughs> glue, <laughs> though, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That might be a good really? topic for a, a show. So and then the only, I knew it was... rip-off experience. <laughs> I knew it was fake, and then I was still wrestling with the guy for it. And then I'm like, wait a minute, it's fake. And this guy's 6'4". In, like, 2001, I got sold some hydro. It's like, this shit's more expensive. It's hydro. It was just Mexican rig that was just wet and been sprayed <laughs> with a mister bottle. Uh, like, oh, that's what hydro? It's like, yeah, that's why it's wet. And then it dried out and weighed, like, half a gram. <laughs> Jeez. We still smoked it. Jeez. Looks like there was my camera bur- blurry. I should do this on the fly so people can see how I have my <laughs> Dude's editing. focusing stick a little behind the scenes. You don't got to be Patreon to... There we go. There's acting up. My man. See, I have a producer over right. here, you know? 
Another comment. This one's good. It's about grow. Herbert, 42. MN growers represent Minnesota growers. I was born in Minnesota. Uh, dude, I built a 10 by 10 room in my garage for $1,300. Did it in a month. And I'm going to put some tents in it. You can do it too. How is the garage room project coming along? So there's actually materials in my garage right now. So that is exciting. I have a pre-hung door. I have my two by fours. I got insulation. It's not put together yet. It's there. Got me thinking about, shout out, what's my lighting going to be? And uh, HLG is hooking it up with some, um, I don't even know what I can fully say. It's a different spectrum. I don't know if it's fully out. It's supposed to be more geared towards cannabis, I believe, to reduce internodal stretching and veg. But I was like, dude, if I'm going to hook up six lights and I'm going to put four UV bars in there, so this thing's going to pimp, Scotty. Like, I need a lighting controller. So, Grandma, that's what I was showing up there. Um, and this, you can see this box we're looking at. Basically, on one side, that's that heavy inner on the left. Yeah, the timer there. That's what you wire your 220 into or whatnot. It's a heavy, yeah. heavy timer. And the box that controls your box here. You can see those outlets that say timed. Those all have breakers behind them. Those are 15 amp timed. And then there's four other outlets that are constant, meaning you want to plug in a couple fans. You want to plug whatever you always need running. Um, and this uh, has, I think you can run 30 amps to it. Just showing a way to do lighting proper. Unless you're an electrician, which I'm not. I'm going to have a buddy that knows electricity hook this up too. Right. I don't like you know what? anything like. I was just going to say, this kind of electricity, I am not... Uh, telling anybody to do their own electricity. But if you have, I guess I am, if you have a basic knowledge of electricity, these are, it's 220 and a ground. So it's literally, you have to have a double pulled breaker. Do me a favor, Grambo, pull, go out if you would. Mm -hmm. uh, zoom out, yeah. And go over to the breakers if you would. See those, the ones like the 215s right next to each other? Mm -hmm. Those are two pulled breakers and... Uh, that's it, that means it's 220. You literally hook one line up to each of those. You know, each, each of those has just one place you can hook the line up to, and uh, the ground to the grounding bar, which is pretty simple. And what, how come there's two sets of singles and one double on both of them? I think those are 110s there, man. Is that right? I think those are 110s. Okay. That's the 220, that thick one there. Ah. And it'll have two. Uh, too as well. One tends to gets a little more complicated, man, because there's a neutral and a ground and yeah. I love electricity. It's fascinating. Yeah. Well, I have a feeling though, when I show this to my buddy that did all his own electrical work for eight lights, he's just gonna be like, that's a waste of money. I know how to do it. So if you have an electrician that knows how to do it, like eh. go for it. No, nah, it's a pain in the butt, man. You still got to buy all those components. Then you got to buy a box. And then your electrician friend can build you one. But it ain't got to be that nice. That yeah, thing's nice. No, man. you know what? The, yeah, and there's 250 bucks for that. And that's in Canadian dollars. I'm like, done. Whoa. Oh, hell yeah. Only thing I would change is the timer. You can get a digital timer. <laughs> oh, solid state, baby. Come on. That thing's dope. What would I want? It's super simple. Two tabs and one knob. Good to go. They are pretty cool. <laughs> deal you got it <laughs> um but more updates coming man the room is gonna be really nice and i'll uh, be doing some updates on discord ig all that fun jazz keep you guys to know and on the show ghost another comment ghost 8782 can you guys please start showing your grows the chit chat is cool and all but we uh, the people <laughs> want to see your results and actions speak louder than words this show i mean you just showed your growth scotty one point yeah, you know what? It is tough because we get age gated all the time. And then so we're trying to figure out how not to do that so we can grow the community and uh, just grow the show. So we're kind of stuck with it. I used to and be also the one not saying, be a sellout. <laughs> that's, I used to be I mean, the one. <clears throat> sorry, I was just going to say, I used to be the one that was like, uh, oh man, we got to grow the show. We got to play the game. We got to play the YouTube. Give, give them what they want. And dude was like, no, you, we can't be sellouts. We're a grow show. We can't be sellouts. We're a grow show. So uh, and it seems like uh, you've drilled that into my head. So I say we just show our grows, bro. Yeah, we're working on it, guys, for sure. Um, it is definitely challenging. And it's a victim of probation. Uh, it's also why when I'm shot, it's some probation. Did say, you just say probation? Jesus, please, I did. It said probation. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> probation. Oh, man, it bugs me more than, you know, uh, Prohibition. Uh, I have a, a buddy in my neighborhood who runs a very successful YouTube channel. Um, 
the story till now. If you like off-road adventure type shit, and he makes a really good living at what he does. And he's, you know, it, it, being in prohibition, companies like YouTube, Google, and all that are operating. I can't wait till it ends. So it still seems like it's going to take forever. Um, I don't think know, so. More of an opportunity. I don't think it's yeah. going to take forever. I think the next year or two, you're going to see major changes happen. Major changes to me means it's not being rescheduled. It's being descheduled. That's that's what it was. Well, I mean, rescheduling is a major change, you know, when they are going to fix everything. Yeah. Yeah, I hear you. No, nothing fixes everything like that. Anyway, getting off point here, I'm going to shout out to some DDC producers before we take it to the news uh, and some memes and fun times. I just got, hey, I'll never know how to find that stuff. I tried to look sometimes ahead. I'm like, how can I fill the area, social media, and make us laugh? And I guess I just got to get into the right algorithm. You can tell me in a minute. <laughs> Um, I tell you what, it's really easy. Start with mine. It's uh, Scotty Real DGC, Facebook.com slash Scotty Real DGC. And then just start clicking and subscribing on those, and I'll start recommending them to you. There's tons of funny stuff there, though. I like it. I like it. A couple of DGC producers here, man. What's up? Not sure. And Taco Tuesday 420. How's it going? Don't forget, sense of smell. What's that sensey smell, huh? Sense of smell. And PC at BC. PC, PC at BC. What does that mean? Dudegrows.com forward slash support guys. Become DGC. Producers, this one's in from Blitzen. Uh, out of Missouri. Missouri Independent says Missouri company at center of cannabis recall used hemp instead of marijuana in products. Oh, shit. Says other business owners say they had no idea they were paying marijuana prices prices for a synthetic THC that had been converted from hemp. Oh my God! Does this still get you high? I don't think so. <clears throat> synthetic T. Wait, what did you say? Yeah, they're using Just, synthetic uh, THC that was converted from hemp. Yeah. Now listen to the, it. how it was used. The cannabis. So Richard Battenberg Jr. feels deceived and cheated. His brand. Colorado-based The Clear. Oh, boy. Isn't that a, like sling for some hard drugs? No. Nah, I don't like, think so. It's they, just... they were the original distillate back in the day. And it's like, oh, it's clear. Yeah. I mean, does it matter so, to them, though, if they're just getting THC distillate? If they're, I think it's called isomerization. Mm -hmm. uh, isn't, doesn't it kick it in the CBI to THC? Maybe. I, I thought. So they're, they're making pre-rolls, The Clear. And they partnered with a licensed Missouri manufacturer produce, to produce the pre-rolls. Some were infused with the THC con concentrator distillate purchased from a uh, Robert, Roberts-based company called Delta Extraction. I would God, be worried right gross. when I said Delta Extraction. Where are we getting our stuff from? Delta Extraction. I don't know. I'd be worried when they're THC or distillate infused joints. Pre-roll joints. Sorry. That's even worse. It's even yeah, worse. They said... Uh, Delta Extraction was fighting off their license suspension and recall by state regulators. The company revealed it had been imported, importing concentrated THC oil made from industrial hemp, which is about four times cheaper to make the marijuana. But if you had it at the right THC concentration, I get what they're saying. It's not cool. Again, does it still... It's high? fraudulent. It'll get, it'll get, yeah, it'll get you high, but it's just fraudulent. I know... Uh, when I was learning how to do that, there was a book called Cannabis Alchemy back in the day. And it had some real chemistry in there. I was doing really simple. I'd do like you know, alcohol hash and just whatever. Uh, but there was ether hash. And then the last thing you could do, is, by the way, you can buy ether in Miami. I found out just only two pints at a time. Okay. But the last thing in, in there was isomerization. And that was you took, I think it was sulfuric acid. You put like a few drops in there and you put a bunch of ether and uh, it was, it was crazy chemistry. Oh, by the way, can cannabis alchemy is totally available as a PDF. If you ever want to look at it. Yeah, there you go. Conversion of cannabidiol into, what does it say? Into yeah, like an psychotropic mm -hmm. tetrahydrocannabinol. Yeah, there you go. Hmm. Interesting. Never been a fan of <clears throat> pre rolls. I mean, some even some. There's got to be some good ones out there, but some. It's like mm. they all. Maybe it's just you got to break it up fresh, man. You got especially in Colorado where it's not humid at all, so dry. Man, I don't like pre rolls. 
Has your freshly rolled joint or pre-roll not been so fresh? Get a new boost stick, guys. Stick it in there. Store those J's right. Integra Dash Products has a new boost stick that slides right into your J container, man, and keeps it at the proper humidity level for when you're ready for that freshly rolled J. As well as everything else over, go to IntegraDashProducts.com. They have all the sizes you need, whether you're storing a five pound toad after harvest or down to just your eighth, little four gram pack, guys. Keep your weed at the right humidity level, not too much, not too little, and keep those terpenes fresh. Integra-products.com, coupon code DUDE will hook you up so you can store the dank and keep it dank. Hey, Grambo, I'll one-up you, or I guess, dude, you found this article. I'll one-up you on your CBD-infused infused, infused uh, joints, pre-rolled joints, mm -hmm. with this article I found, man. Federal local law enforcement arrest Crystal Lake man. I don't know where that's at. I know there's one in Florida. Accused of selling THC edibles that were laced with psilocybin. And by the way, look at the look on his face. Like, I can't believe I got to go to jail for this, man. He's well quaffed <laughs> Wow. But I just thought that was, can I say that was funny? Is that okay? Yeah. The right dose, like Grambo said, man. Yeah. It's like, it made me laugh because like, dude, if you hit the right, like minuscule dose, like, you know, you, some edibles are a little psychedelic. -y. So, I mean, in the black market, if you never took cannabis edibles, it's not the worst hustle. Yeah. Same on right. you, Joshua Ludd from was, Camp Crystal Lake, Jason Voorhees. Uh, <laughs> yeah, isn't that right? That's where Jason Voorhees is from. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You're right. That's him. That's under the Oh, mask. it says un unknowingly to the user. I'm like, maybe this was one of his like niche products. You know, like. I think it's a great product, man. He's just making homemade Moonlanders, dude. Aren't they both legal now? See, we're never going to not get educated, dude. We're just not, it's all right? Legal. Just tell your friends, please. Denver, Colorado, 100% <laughs> legal. <laughs> right? Algorithm. Right? Oh, uh, shoot. We had another news story uh, from j -Pen. What's up? j -Pen sent me some news over there. You need to see producers, man. If you're listening, don't forget, message me over on Patreon, man. If you got news for the show, you got Grow Talk, Sorry, you got constructive criticism on Scotty only, Hit me up over there. I'm always checking those messages. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is MJ Biz Daily. And I don't know how to pronounce this company name. Or, or Organigram? Organigram. There we go. Organigram. Organigram. Secures United Kingdom cannabis supply deal. I thought this was interesting because this is a Canadian producer, Organigram Holdings, struck a supply agreement with 4C Labs to provide dried medical cannabis flour for the UK market. And we know there's a lot of UK growers uh, actually, One-Eyed Cat just put out a fall prohibition report. If you guys are hearing this, go yeah. on and check it out if you're in the UK. Uh, we want to hear what you have going on. And we know there's some DDC, so go hit it up. Um, let's start that, that conversation. But this is the reason they did this, because, Scotty, I'm like, why? How is it profitable to package weed in Canada, send it to the UK on a boat, whatever you're doing, plane? Airplane. Pay for that. It should, it, it's not going to be as fresh. But it says medical cannabis has been legal in the UK since 2018. However... Due to significant energy cost comparisons compared to Canada, access to consistent, high-quality products in this market is limited, making importing medical cannabis an attractive option. So literally, you're talking due to this, the, the grid? Like, it's that much more in the UK to produce for power than Canada? I wonder. I think that might actually have to do with the whole uh, Ukraine thing. They get a lot of their oil. Like, we get a lot of our oil from a lot of international places, but Europe gets it a lot from the uh, the big guys, the big bads over there. So I think that that is forcing their cannabis grows. Like, it was probably less a year or two ago than it is now. I know it is taxing well, on infrastructure, too. I mean, if everyone's going to fire, if you're going to start firing up a thousand lights or go try to find a warehouse where you, I don't know, about a thousand lights. Does anybody do a thousand lights? If you're going to try to find a warehouse that can handle five, six hundred lights, and it's going to, you're going to have to have huge amounts of power and make sure you're right near a, you know, a transformer or probably buy your own transformers. You know, it's a big deal. And then also infrastructure in general. I don't want to say infrastructure, maybe constructions, home, residential homes. Like they're a lot older over there. Like Europe's. Mm. I mean, well, they ain't got infinite amounts of room to go west or to go east. There's a lot of land left. Yeah. I didn't know how far north Sweden was. So DGC in Sweden uh, was just awesome. like, yeah, I'm, uh, yeah. you know, a couple hours from the Arctic Circle. I looked at the map. I'm like, damn, Sweden is way up there. And it's very long. It's, it's, it's very north-south. It's got a lot of direction. Hey, come on. You got to clip break. that. 
He's but- got to say deep thoughts with the dude. I didn't know how far North Sweden was, man. <laughs> It'd be great. We're working that for our spring break 2024 trips. Sweden, here let's, we come. Let's do it. All right. And I see what you got there. Uh, A multi-year supply mint deal with Canadoc in Israel. Yeah. Israel has been growing weed for a long time. Man. We're the OGs, remember? Uh, Dr. Raphael Meshulam, University of Jerusalem. That's where all of the cannabis knowledge before 2012 came from. It's essentially one guy's practice. It's just... So, yeah, I get you. So, with the organogram again, in summary, in Canada, growing the dank, sending it over to the UK, Israel, continued shipments to Medcan and Canatrek in Australia, and new international shipments to Germany. I was in charge of any of those with countries. The sanity like, group. Dude, they call themselves our own. The Canada the companies call the Sanity Group. group. Uh... <laughs> That is so that. cool. That is so cool. <laughs> what a gr- Someone that smokes weed came up with that, and that's awesome. Uh, I like it. Catch Grambo. Um, all right, let's check out some memes, dude, some social media. Any of the above? What do you got? What did you find, uh, Scotty? In your- so I have to be on Facebook for this, though. No, no, this was these actually this first one was from dudegrows.com, and it's just JR, and it's OC Deb in 20. Okay, like 20 years. Says, well, it says, where do you see yourself in 30 years? And it's just this woman smoking a joint, holding on to her plants. She's probably 80. I think there's a cat in there too, somewhere. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I thought, I think OC Deb is, is his wife's uh, handle. Oh. And yeah, and it just made me think. I'll hang out, I'll talk to One Eye Cat Cannabis, who does our social media. So many times he'll be just telling me what him, what him and his wife were doing, laughing and having a good time, smoking weed together. And mm-hmm. uh, although my wife doesn't smoke weed with me, she sure does make me smile a lot. So uh, it's just neat. I figured we'd shout out to all the ladies out there. That's definitely all, shout man. out to okay. Mrs. Real. I got to hang out with her on Saturday at the concert. Man, she was rocking. I, we have so much fun. <laughs> shout out to Miss Real. <laughs> She was rocking harder than nice guy Kenny, right? Kenny was a being a <laughs> bee. He was, Fetterman. He was Fetterman. He had to watch his, you know, he stands up, he gets photographed, you know? Yeah. He's over it. <laughs> Are you him? I just thought it was good. Just made me think, man. Just made me think. I and can he was, give you the one eyed. Well, yes, sir. one eyed update is uh, I talked to him this morning. Like, Everything's good. A little bit of a hurricane blew your way. He's like, yeah, it was uh, kind of just sitting out uh, a little bit. I think he sat on the patio or something and. He's like, I was on some shrooms with a ball in my <laughs> robe. Kind of like a weird hurricane tripping Santa. <laughs> uh, that's up? weird. I wish I could have joined you. All right. Yeah, if you're into cannabis culture, follow those two guys, JR Token and One Eyed Cat Cannabis. They might be the most, like, truly, authentically, they love weed. Yeah. It yes, they thing. do. Mm-hmm. Yes, they do. Just follow them. I do for the last little social media. Can I ask you which one? Which one would you rather be? You have to pick one. This guy, that's an Ibex. What is this? Wow. I okay. guess he's comfortable doing that. Mm. Or she. They. They. Sorry. Wicked <laughs> horns, dude. I'm, I'm going to be the Ibex sir. for the horns. Check yeah. those yeah. Those, are those are cool. And okay, so you can either do that. You're going to hang out with that guy. Or watch this one. I mean, just, I don't know what was bigger balls. The gorilla or that guy. Well, definitely not the gorilla. They have tiny tiny. I like that he has to wear a mask out there. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, look, are you nuts? Who the hell wants to get that close to a gorilla? You know what? I bet he's wearing that mask so he can't see his facial expression. Oh my fucking god, dude! Um, dude, 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 I dude can you come this way? Can you come this dude. way? I love it. <laughs> What's that? This What's is a. That? It's another one of those uh, fake VFX. Oh, videos. thank God. Dude, yeah. I'm getting scared already. Yeah, this is a corridor what crew. Is- this is uh, this is one of my favorite. Uh, uh, this I, I learned VFX from a lot of these guys. So these are uh, corridor crew at YouTube. Amazing. Right. It's called a uh, B- Boss Town Dynamics, opposed to Boston Dynamics. Right. Yeah. Right. Joe so Rogan like fell fake. for it. Yeah. Right. We'll just take the H kid. I'm telling you, man. This is Rogan famously retweeted this. Like it's all real in the apocalypse, and these guys' channel blew up. Wow. It's good for uh, good for business. Okay. Wow. Very strange. It is neat, man. Poor guy inside this suit. His name's Clint. He's <laughs> one of them little people, you know. Clint's doing fine. Just working. Oh. All right. You guys uh, had a good time. Dudegrows.com forward slash support. Kid Grambo around. Yeah. 
<laughs> and uh, if you missed our last show, it was a great Saturday show. We were hanging out talking about cannabis concentrates. Uh, Scotty's wife had some. You guys were all camping and they were concerned. So we oh, got yeah. back and the of cannabis concentrates. What's happening? That was a great Saturday show. Please go back and check that out. Comment, like, subscribe. Have a good day. Stay higher. Thank you, Grambo, Scotty. And peace out. All right. Take your easy, dude.